today I kind of want to talk about something that I've been holding off talking about for quite some time now, but I think now is probably the perfect time iPad OS 26. So, Apple recently announced at their WWDC event upcoming OS updates that is going to be coming across their entire line of devices, which is pretty much going to be centered around this liquid glass theme that is supposed to be a new visual design language that should bring a more immersive and more unified visual experience across the different interface. Personally, I really do like this move and from my early hands-on experience and from what I've seen so far, I guess you can probably say that I'm also pretty excited as well to see when this actually fully rolls out later on this year, as it's really shaping up to be probably one of the most solid updates that we've seen from Apple in recent times. But what I am actually most excited and I guess curious about is to see how much will this update change the overall user experience with my iPad. Now, it has been very well documented, especially here on this platform, and it's actually no news that the iPad is an extremely powerful device, especially since Apple started introducing their M series chips to them, and I've actually shared my very own thoughts on the M1 iPad Pro, specifically most of it, which actually still stays true to this day. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this video, uh, review video that I did on the M1 iPad Pro down below the like button. But essentially the main takeaway to that is that we haven't actually quite seen its true capabilities, which is actually pretty puzzling to most of us as to why Apple was essentially crippling the iPad that essentially kind of left it in this pretty weird and confusing position. So I dusted off my M1 iPad Pro. Well, I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating a bit, but I really wanted to see how far and how much that gap has been bridged by bringing MacBook level multitasking and productivity to something like the iPad with that new iPad OS 26. Now, let me just be clear. I'm actually gonna be the first one to tell you that the iPad will never ever replace the MacBook, but what I'm actually hoping for is an overall experience on the iPad that takes me really close to that so I can actually have a better understanding of who and what the iPad is really for. So is the iPad still in that weird in-between place? Well, it's definitely, it's definitely gotten way better, but I still think it's complicated. Let me tell you why. So I've been using the public beta version of iPad OS 26 for the better part of over a month at this point. Of course, it's not the final version, so there were definitely a few bugs here and there. Actually, it's probably been one of the most stable beta software that I've ever tried, but it's actually still a work in progress until it's officially released later this fall. Now, I was still able to get a chance to take a close look at what's new and what's also interesting and what problems did Apple solve with this new iPad OS 26. Now, the first and most obvious change is, of course, this new visual refresh that Apple is calling the liquid glass design. And this is probably the biggest iPad OS redesign that I've personally seen in years. Now, remember the old iOS 7 glass look? back then, well, think of this version as the more modern, more immersive and moodier version. Menus and sidebars and widgets now have this semi-transparent frosted look that's mixed with dynamic blur and a subtle depth effect. I like this new look, I must say, and I think Apple took this approach so that it fits into the spatial theme that we've actually seen with Vision OS on their Vision Pro headset, kind of making the UI feel like it exists in this 3D space. Now, it definitely, definitely makes multitasking feel a little bit more natural and look much cleaner and, of course, less cluttered so you can see context behind your current window without switching apps, especially now that we have overlapping windows, which we're going to actually talk about in a quick second. Now, I did notice some downsides to this new liquid glass redesign. One is that 
I'm almost certain some people are going to potentially find the transparency a little bit too much, which will make identifying certain apps and reading text a little harder, especially if you are one who have a lighter wallpaper. You can definitely revert back to the default display settings if you edit your home screen. And there is also a reduced transparency toggle that you can find in the settings under accessibility. But for me, honestly, it's been a month and I haven't gone back to the old opaque look and I'm really trying to embrace this new look as much as possible. I really do like it. I'm going to be honest. Now, maybe instead of just having an on and off toggle for transparency, Apple could you know, instead introduce something like an intensity or opacity slider so that you can dial in the preferred transparency strength. I think I kind of prefer that approach, but I, I don't know if Apple is somehow watching this. I know you can do it, just make it happen. I think, I think that would be a better approach. Okay, we're moving on. This is the, this feature is actually the one that makes me go finally. In iPadOS 26, Apple has basically given us a Mac style windowing system. Not, not some halfway split view thing, not a limited stage manager. I'm talking about proper resizable windows. You get the little green, yellow and red traffic light buttons in the corner. You can drag the edges to resize and also get this. You can even overlap them like you would typically do on your MacBook. And here's the thing. This changed completely how I use my iPad. Before, when I was doing a research, I had to constantly swipe back and forth between my reference in Safari and my notes window. Now I can have both side by side exactly how I want it with even having a YouTube video floating off in the corner for a little entertainment, while also having maybe like the calculator off in another corner. It was a big game changer for me. It feels natural, which is which is actually funny because for years the iPad refused to let us work this way. It was all very, you know, one or two apps at a time in a neat little box. But no, it's like the iPad finally just loosened its tie, rolled up its sleeve and said, hey, let's get some real work done. And here's the other thing. It's really not just for work. Even casually, it's pretty awesome. I was watching a YouTube video the other night and while browsing the Apple store in another window, I know it, it's a dangerous combo, but hey, it felt like I was actually on a laptop, but with all the touch and the pencil goodness that comes with having an iPad. Now, is it perfect? Nah, not yet. There are, you know, definitely still some little quirks that I've found, but honestly, once you get a taste of this freedom, I mean, going back to the old split view way of doing things just feels completely outdated. But also one of the coolest little surprises that I wasn't expecting that actually is coming with iPadOS 26 is that Apple's finally bringing over some of those Mac only apps that some of us kind of been, you know, side eyeing a little bit. Four of them actually to be exact. And they're not just filler, they're actually useful. And I was honestly, as I said, not expecting this. First up is the journal app. Now, think of this as like your notes app, but more intentional. You can go ahead, you can write and sketch with the Apple Pencil, you can drop in photos, even voice memos you can go in and add to this app. And it all feels more like a personal creative space rather than just a list of random thoughts. Then there's the preview app. And this one for me, this one's pretty huge. Now picture this. If you've ever been sent a PDF to sign on an iPad, you know, it's always like a bit of a dance between third party apps. Now you can just open it in preview or annotate it, sign it, even make quick image edits all without leaving the app. That's a definite welcome addition. The third one's the phone app. Yeah. You can now actually make and take phone calls on your iPad. Of course, if it's linked to your iPhone. Now, I personally didn't think I'd use it much, but I'm actually surprised to find that I've already taken a couple of calls while my phone was charging in another room. And I mean, it just works. But lastly, the games app. Now, this isn't just a random 
app icon. It's actually a proper hub for a game center. You can see your invites, you can manage multiplayer sessions, and also track your progress without digging through the app store menus. Pretty useful for those who actually are into gaming. Now, what I love most about all of this is that these aren't watered down versions. They honestly feel like the Mac apps on the iPad, just tuned more for touch and for also using something like the Apple Pencil. It's definitely one of those, you know, small but meaningful changes that makes the iPad feel less like um, iOS on a bigger screen and more like, you know, a full on platform. Now, if you're someone like me and you've tried to actually do work, real work on an iPad, then iPad OS 26 actually is giving us some new pro workflow that are, I don't want to say game changing, but it's pretty darn close. Now, the first big one, background task. Now, before, if you were, you know, exporting a video in Final Cut, if you use Final Cut on the iPad, you were basically just stuck babysitting the progress bar. Now, you can just go ahead, you can hit export, then you can, let's say, hop over to Safari to check your analytics. Uh, you can go ahead, open notes to outline your next project or even sketch a thumbnail if that's what you do in Procreate. And that actually does not stop your export. It just keeps going in the background. There are no interruptions. There are no frozen apps. It works beautifully. So that was definitely a huge one. If you're into that kind of workflow, trust me. Then, of course, there's also local capture, which is actually a fancy way of saying you can record super high quality audio and video straight to the iPad without that weird uh, compression or quality loss that you typically get in older versions. Now, I've already uh, used it to capture a test podcast segment with a USB mic plugged right in and the results were just awesome. The audio quality crisp. And also, if you're someone who likes to hook up an external display to your iPad, then this one is going to be pretty huge. iPad OS 26 now treats it like a real second monitor, not just a mirrored screen, but a fully separate workspace. If you use something like Final Cut Pro on the iPad, you can have Final Cut Pro open on the iPad, uh, then use your reference material or script on the monitor itself, and you just move between them like you would typically do, like you're using a MacBook. Now, one thing that I was really, really hoping that I would have seen with this update was the ability to hook up my iPad to an external monitor and use it in clamshell mode while still being able to use all my you know, other external peripherals, which is how I typically use my MacBook most times at my desk. Hopefully Apple, you know, can add this function just before or on the final release of the iPad OS 26. That would have been such a game changer for me, especially for my personal workflow. That aside, I, I mean, I really like and appreciate this new pro workflow that we're now seeing with iPad OS 26. And I know it might sound like small stuff to some of you, but if you're a creator like me or you're a designer, or even if you're a heavy multitasker, then some of these changes mean you can now finally stop treating the iPad like a mobile only device and actually use it for real sustained work. And then there's also all the other extra stuff that pretty much rounds out the experience on the new iPad OS 26 that's actually, you know, really worth mentioning pretty quickly. Now, firstly, Apple Intelligence is now giving you live translation in FaceTime. You're gonna have Genmoji for creating custom emojis and Image Playground for quick AI-generated graphics. Then there is Stage Manager 2.0, which is now, I mean, it's way less restrictive. It also works on all supported iPads that actually feels way more usable than before. And on top of that, we've got interactive uh, widgets inside apps. Uh, you have a new gaming mode for a lower latency and also a much smarter files app with tags, with filters and quick actions, which I'm really, really happy to see now on my iPad. But actually none of these on their own, I would say are going to be headline features, but altogether, I think they make the iPad faster, it makes the iPad smoother. And honestly, 
way more fun to use. So here's the thing, iPad with iPad OS 26. I mean, it's easily the biggest step forward we've seen probably in years at this point. I mean, it's faster, uh, it's more flexible, and it finally lets you work in a way that doesn't feel like you're constantly fighting the operating system. But here's the thing, I still think the iPad is um, in a weird place. I know, strange to say, uh, even though it's powerful enough now to handle, you know, real pro-level workflows, uh, video editing, proper external display setups, yet I just believe Apple is still holding back just enough to keep it from being a full Mac replacement. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the iPad is not supposed to be a Mac. It's supposed to be its own thing, right? But with iPad OS 26, that thing is finally a lot more capable and honestly a lot more tempting to use for more serious work. So yeah, um, still, I think it's in a weird place, but now it's a, it's a good weird. The kind where you want to stick around and see where it actually goes next. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. That's, you know, that's kind of my thoughts on the new iPad OS 26. Hopefully on the final release, I probably make a follow-up video to this. Let me know if you would like to see that. Either way, that's been it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so as yet and you appreciate and like content like this. It means a lot to me and it helps the channel out a lot as well. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.